everybody. It's me, Roger, back with more records. It's been a while. Uh, I've been busy. Um, and it was record store day, and um, I, it's, uh, I'm tired. Um, I had a gig. I had a gig. Opening for these guys. Larry Oaks, Nels Klein, Gerald Cleaver. If you know who these guys are, you know they're heavy duty. I mean, Nels Klein's a fucking rock star. Plays with Wilco. Uh, and this is like free free rock jazz kind of thing. And they were incredible. And I couldn't believe I was invited to, to do this. And I, I played a solo set using some of this desktop weirdness. And it went really well. And it was, you know, I did about 30 minutes. And... Um, it was a big stage with lights and a flown PA and subwoofers and a, you know maybe a hundred people. Certainly by the time I finished playing, there were a hundred people there. And um, nice venue. Uh, it was a Little Harpeth Brewing Company over by the football stadium in Nashville. Highly recommended. Really nice venue. Early start time. Really good. Um, and these guys were awesome. I picked up their other Larry Oaks other CDs. Um, anything is possible. This is also on Clean Feed. This is on Clean Feed, just recent, pretty new. And then this on the great label Rogart, uh, a duet with Gerald Cleaver in a cave, literally in a cave. Um, <laughs> thrift stuff. And they were really cool, and it was really cool. And um, yeah. anyway, and then, kind of on short notice, Sam Bird. Drummer Sam Bird came, you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to the um, wedding in Memphis and my wife's at a conference in Atlanta so she can fly to Nashville and then I can drive to Nashville, pick her up at the airport and then we can have a day and a half to make noise in the studio. And that's what we did. Um, he just left this morning to go pick her up and then go to Memphis and then drive all the way back to, to Richmond. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. Um, Anyway, cheers, everybody. Uh, it's been quite a month. Um, yeah. Bourbon and Bitters. Cheers, John Kiefer and um, Mark, the, the Dr. Rhythm guys. Uh, thanks for showing my monograph. That was kind of cool. Uh, glad I got there safely. Right, cheers, everybody. All right. Enough of my yammering on about that. You're here for the records. I know. And first, we got some VCLT. Very kind VCLT. From, first of all, David Gibson, who is over in North Carolina, um, you know, contacted me through Facebook and was like, oh, I want to send you something that, uh, it turns out he had been involved in kind of the Kickstarter that raised the money to make this record in. Anyway, he sent it to me. And um, it's very, very cool of him. Arctic Sleep is the name of the band. And the name of the record is Passage of Gaia. That's a really nice cover, gatefold, two LP. You know, it's like, God, ah, you know, that's, that's the way to do it, right? Uh, I think it's self-released from 2014. So what is it? It's it's kind of metal, um, but it's cl clean singing, as they would say, you know. Kind of reminds me a little bit of late period anathema. Um, it's good, I like it, I like it a lot. Um, my only quibble, and I always have a quibble, you know, I'm sorry, but, um, is the drums are like, it sounds like it's either a machine or they've taken samples and they've replaced real drums with samples. And, you know, these samples, they sound the same, you know, a kick drum sounds exactly the same every single time you hear it. And, and that gets wearying and that's not, that's not what drums sound like, you know, a, a, a kick drum will sound different every time. It's, it's impossible to do it exactly. And those who can't, you know, well, Jackie Liebesit, for instance, could make his drum sound like a machine, but it was still, he, anyway, but that is just a quibble. The music is great. Um, apparently he's gone on to do even more ambitious stuff. And, um, you know, this is just the kind of metal that, you know, I really appreciate. And so thank you, David. I, I really appreciate it. You really didn't have to do that. Um, you know, and as he said to me, it's like, you know, got to try to keep the VC locomotive going and so yes thank you very very much very nice record um, and then this showed up you know I tried I tried to order this from 
Gianmarco Liguri and Sarang Bang. And it like it wouldn't take my money. I anyway I contacted him and he was like, Oh, I'll send you one. So and he did. This is the latest on Sarang Bang. Um Murray McNabb's E Music. This is um electronic music from the Mod X archive. Um, so this is, you know, a posthumous release um by this guy who's a big deal in New Zealand, but I think not as well known as he should be in the rest of the world. Anyway, at least here in here in Dixieland, um, this is great stuff. Now, Gianmarco and Sarang Bang had done um, a previous compilation of uh, his music, um, but I think it was mostly previously released music. It was more of like a compilation to show the breadth of his music. And so this is more experimental and. Uh, it's terrific. I've listened to it a couple of times. I still feel like I haven't quite absorbed it all. Um, you can get it on Bandcamp, Serang Bang, you know, uh, you know, Bandcamp. You can find it, you can buy it. Pressing is fantastic. Nice gatefold, lovely liner notes, nice pressing. Sounds incredible. Um, you know, not to keep toot my own damn horn, but Gianmarco Liguri and I have been collaborating remotely on a on a project that is fairly close to completion, and we're really hoping to put it out on vinyl on Serang Bang. And you know, I'm not anytime soon, but you know, we we are determined to make that happen. So I, we've been working on it for a couple of years now, and so um, and it's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. Maybe not as good as this, but you know, I will be honored to share the you know the label with this stuff so yeah get hop on this stuff it's limited um it's beautiful great stuff thank you Gianmarco, marco for sending it to me that's all the way from new zealand uh, you know salute salute <clears throat> so yeah i'm i'm giving my ears a break you know all day yesterday and then we got up and um played another recorded another 40 minutes of music before lunch, and then he took off, and I, I'm giving my ears a rest. And not that where I'm like, I don't. We don't do it at like, we do, but you know, he is bashing away on the drums in there, and even with closed back headphones, it, it gets loud in here. And yeah, so anyway, I'm just taking it easy. I'm like, I have a lot of records, but I, I'm not. I don't want to listen. I, I'm giving my ears a rest. So I'm on YouTube yammering at you folks. I'm, eh, yeah. Cheers. Okay. Hey, I was wondering, you know, Zach does streaming. Some people do these streams. Would anybody watch a stream? My, my concern is, like, I'll stream and, like, pff, no one will care. But, you know, I like the idea that you can interact on a stream. But, all right, I'm going to stop right here. No, right, right now. Right here, right now. Okay, Record Store Day. Record Store Day. Oh, you know, I, no way in hell is I going to go all the way to Grimey's and wait in some big line. I don't care that much. But it was kind of a nice day, and I thought, oh, I'll go check out this place, McKay, on this side of town. And I didn't go early. I went at, like, a reasonable time. And just, and, uh, hey, you know, hey, why do you know I found some stuff? You know, for instance, you know, okay, you know, this isn't a big deal, but it's the special record store day edition of the new Sun record, Life Metal. That's a terrible title, but, you know, I get, it's like the opposite of death metal, right? Um, this was recorded by Steve Albini at Electrical Audio, and I gotta tell you, this sounds fucking awesome. I mean, it, you know, as, as impossible as it is to contain the, you know, the magnif you know, the magnitude of sun, like live, and all those fucking amplifiers, shaking. They played the cave, the cavern in Pelham, Mass in Pelham. Tennessee recently, and I'm like, oh, well, that's that's a way to die, you know, like have the cave collapse on you while you're seeing sun. Wouldn't that be cool? I know a guy went and said it was awesome. Anyway, so the new sun, it's great. It's, you know, I, this is a really strong ride. This is way better, I think, than the last few things they've done, and it's the real deal, and it captures what they sound like. If you can crank it up and get that full frequency and you know, get the room vibrating, yeah. Yeah, this is good. Good stuff. And so it's funny also that this is the special record store day edition. Special black vinyl. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Whiskey. Whiskey. 
whiskey can make me mouthy. Look out. All right, here's something I, they had one copy of, and it was like, oh, this looked really cool, so I picked it up. Uh, Ceremonial Healing. This is Marshall Allen, Danny Ray Thompson from the Sun Ra Orchestra, Jamie Saft on keyboards, Trevor Dunn on bass, great Trevor Dunn. Balzas Pondi, great drummer who's got like metal roots but can do the free jazz thing really well. Um, plus some tracks with Roswell, well, Ros, Roswell Rudd on trombone. A problematic instrument, but he's a master of it. Three LPs on red vinyl, special red vinyl for... Um, Record Store Day, and uh, I gotta say, I, I kind of left it sealed for a while, and then when Sam was here uh, last night, I, I was like, oh, let's check this out, because, you know, he's a huge Sun Ra guy, and he was the one who told me, like, oh, you know, you really gotta check out the Sun Ra Orchestra under Marshall Allen, because they're really good, and they are really good, and if you get a chance to see them, go. Um, I didn't have huge hopes for this. But I gotta tell you, this is really, 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 really good. Really good. Like, like no joke. Like, no, not just, I thought it was gonna be kind of, I'll be honest, I thought it was gonna be real loosey-goosey and uh, unfocused and just sort of like a, uh, you know, well, you know how free jazz can be, you know. But it's not that at all. It is, I mean, Marshall Allen is playing his ass off. He's 80-something years old. He's playing some flute and uh, as is Danny Ray Thompson and he's Danny Ray Thompson's playing like this gorgeous uh, baritone sax stuff that's you, you know he tends to like kind of riff and stuff but I, I, this is really 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 good really good highly recommended it's in this gorgeous box that opens up and um, yeah it's cool it's cool I mean if you can deal with like modern jazz and new stuff yeah so I uh, also picked this up, the new Chris Forsyth. This wasn't any special Record Store Day thing, except that it was released on Record Store Day, like a week before its official official release. And it's another double album from him. It's not the Solar Motel Band. It's more of a solo record. I only listened to it once. I liked it. You know, I've studied guitar with him via Skype. It really, it was really a great experience. Um, I think he's become more, too much of a rock star to you know, be teaching guys like me guitar anymore. But I, you know, I'm really grateful for the Time I got to spend with him. Uh, this is really good. People are raving about it. I, I'm not sure it ticks all the boxes for me. Um, I don't know. I need to listen to it again. Okay, now this was kind of... They only had one copy of it. I'm really glad they had a copy of it because this was apparently a big deal. Third Man's reissue of Trout Mask Replica. Captain Beefheart's classic record on Frank Zappa's label, Bizarre. Uh, and a really thick cardboard sleeves like 200 gram vinyl like and apparently from the original master tapes i don't know you know i'm not the biggest jack white fan i'm, I'm just not but i gotta give him props where props are due this was obviously pressed at the new pressing plant in detroit that he's opened and they did a fucking fantastic job from the mastering and to the plating to the pressing you know I, I used to have a copy of this I got back in like the early 80s and it was like too weird for me. Well, I kept it and then I got the CD and I thought, well, I'll just have the CD. I got rid of the, the LP. One of the more, most stupid things I've ever done as a record collector was... Yeah, so originals are super stupid expensive. And so this, you know, not cheap. You know, I think it was like 35 bucks or something like that. But, you know, you ever go like, go price out what it costs to press a record. It's really expensive. So this is worth every penny, I think. I think it sounds really, really good. You know, maybe there's a little bit of high-end roll-off because it's an old tape and, you know, very absolute first editions are going to have a little bit more sparkle in the... Yeah. I have no doubt about that. How long have I been rambling? <laughs> Oh, I gotta give a shout out. I don't know if you're watching, but hey, Andreas, if you're watching, that was inspiring also to come back on. Is like, you know, Andreas Sonic Mainliner made a video after months and months. You know, I thought, oh God, he's he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. Nothing gonna bring him back. But there he was. That was great. And then also very inspiring was also uh, James Buttery's video with his partner. What a cute couple they were. I, I, that was fun. Uh, I asked Liz if she would come on camera. She said, ah, sure. So maybe, maybe, 
maybe stay tuned. Get, leave a comment if you want to see Liz and I do, do a video. She's got some records. She's got really good taste. All right. Um, anyway, back to Record Store Day at McKay's. Um, they had this. They had one copy of this. At, and I, you know, even though I knew going in it wasn't going to be great, uh, but it's this limited, bruh, pressed in France. Uh, Richard Penhaus live at Bam Blam on Bam Blam Records. I'm familiar with with what he was doing. It's his most recent tour. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to get rid of it, but, you know, it's not the burbling sequences and frip-like, you know, guitars and stuff. It's it's like sonic noise assault. <laughs> um, and, you know, hey, I got no problem with that. Um, my problem with it is that it's a little bit undifferentiated at times, but, you know, anyway, I'm not going to get rid of it. It's probably a rare record, rare, rare record, record store day. But anyway, it's cool. I, you know, I'm a huge Richard Penhaus Heldon fan, as you know if you watch my channel, which apparently people do. Hmm. All right, pick this up. Cecil Taylor, great Paris concert, or student studies as it's sometimes known. Um, this is well. It's, you can see some Taylor. What do you want? Um, I've had this on CD for a long time. Um, they've done a really nice job of pressing this. This is on... It was really on Freedom. I think there's an Heiress to Freedom version of this so that would be worth looking for because that would be all analog. Um, who did this? Oh, this is ORG. And it's on white vinyl, I think. And I thought, oh, yeah, why? Why? But... And it sounds really, really good. It really does. And this is early, you know, fairly early, 1966, with um, Cecil Taylor on piano, Jimmy Lyons, the great Jimmy Lyons on alto saxophone, Alan Silva on bass, and Andrew Surreal on drums. I mean, one of his great, great bands who like really un got what he was up to. And this is this is great. This is you know, you know, there's a lot of different ways into Cecil Taylor's music. His Cecil Taylor's music can seem really forbidding and off-putting but this is a this is a good way in and and if you can grok this well then you're golden you can you you know you can take it all the way to the end um yes he's a hero he's a hero cheers to the late great cecil taylor all right pick this up <sighs> Even though this isn't like my favorite record in all, of all time, but I got swept up in the record store day frenzy, if you will, where I was, you know, oh, this is a record from the early 90s that's like super rare originals, you know. So what is this? This is the Charlatans UK. Well, they were known as the Charlatans in, in the UK, but here in the US, there was some 60s band that failed, that sued and said no. And they, so in the US, they were known as the Charlatans UK. So originally on Beggar's Banquet from, oh, 89 or something like that, early 90s. Kind of associated with that Madchester kind of Stone Roses, Stone Roses, Happy Mondays. But this isn't quite as silly as that. This is more like rock. This is really good. This is, this is really good. Uh, it crams a lot of music on one piece of vinyl. Um, but they did a decent job with it. I, you know, I'm happy with it. I, you know, I'm I picked this up. This is a previous record store day thing, but it, it, I'd never seen it there before. This is uh, Bernard Estardi's Space Oddities. Space Oddities. Kind of a cheesy cover there, but um, it's on Born Bad Records. And um, it's a compilation of this guy. Um, I think he's French. He did a lot of... It's like library music, basically. Um, Synthesizer-based library music. And it's really good. And I really liked it quite a lot. Uh, and also found this used, another Pat Martino record I don't have, Visit, inspired and dedicated to Wes Montgomery. This is on Cobblestone Records, 1972, and no, it wasn't a dollar. And it's a little chewed up, but damn, he looks cool there, doesn't he? And those glasses and that goatee, the hair, the jacket, the, the upturned collar, the, yeah, the nose. He's got it all going on. No, this is really, uh, you know, I have raved about Pat Martino before. And he's, and some people don't like guitar, jazz guitar. You know, I'm okay. Or they don't like the sound of the guitar. They don't want to hear a guitar playing, you know. 
dunky 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 they want to hear chords strum me strum me strum me strum maybe i don't know so that's what i picked up on record store day i thought not bad you know i'm not going to drive all over kingdom kingdom come to try to you know because i like i said i don't care i don't care but i got some cool records that's what you do on record store day right right Cheers, everybody. I can't seem to get buzzed enough. I just feel tired. I just feel tired. All right. I'm, jo I'm joshing, folks. I'm joshing. <laughs> you still hanging in there? All right. Got a few more. So I went back a few days later and I thought, oh, maybe they'll... Hmm, some leftovers. And yeah, there was. So I picked this up. Jacques Thalot. Jacques Thalot. Uh, intro Musique. This was originally, I think, on RCA or Philips, 1970-something, right? Got to be 1970-something. Um, so this is European jazz from the early 70s uh, with Eddie Gauma on guitar and piano. Uh, Jacques Thalot himself is a drummer. And there's a lot of, like, drum solos on this. But they kind of work. This is a really cool record. Um, but, yeah, with Eddie Gauma on um, guitar and piano, Michel Portal on alto sax, um, Mimi Lorenzi on guitar, I don't know that person, Daniel Lalou on tambour, interesting, recorded at Fac du Droit, Paris, 1969, yeah, 1969, I was wrong, but on the edge of the 70s. This is cool, this is really cool, apparently only 350 copies, originals are super rare, um, if you can deal with some drum solos, they're good drum solos, but, um, yeah, she's pretty. All right. And I also, like, ran into the guy. Oh, I can't, I'm now, I'm so bad with names. I don't think he watches my videos, so it's okay. Uh, but he was like, oh, did you find anything on Record Store Day? And I was like, oh, yeah, this is, he's like, oh, did you, oh, did you see the Rodalius thing? I was like, no. He's like, oh, let's go see. And so he's like, oh, yeah, this. Lunds, Lunds 3, Lund 3, Lund, what the hell is it? Like, if I saw it, I was like, I don't know what that is, and was like, passed on. Not the most exciting cover, right? But anyway, whatever it is, it's um, Tim Story and Rodalius. Um, they do a lot of collaborations. I, I got one at Big Ears when I saw Rodalius. Um, and, and, but there's also some, like, additional synthesizers and violin and Mike story con plays concert band I, I don't know what that means um so this is less it's certainly not noy or it's certainly not like kraut rock it's more composed more like chamber music uh, with electronics um it's nice liz quite liked it um i thought it was a little bit dull frankly but you know Music happens in your mind, you know, that it's not on the record and it's not, it's obviously not just the fleeting vibrations, you know, that happen in that moment. Music happens in your mind. It's when you re your ear receives it and then your brain does something with it. That, that is music. Okay, I'm... I do believe that, though. But, you know, uh, there are, you know musicologists who will be like, oh, Beethoven's music is contained in the score. I think that's quite the opposite. That music only exists when someone, the performer, translated in, into, again, like vibrating air, and then someone hears it, and then their brain does something, and then that that's music. <laughs> okay, that's my record story. I've got a few more records to show. Am I going to make a whole 30-minute video? Are you still there? Are you still there? You know what? I'm really going to try to, you know, again, would you would you watch a stream? Because then I could, like, interact with you. And I'm going to try to, I really am going to try to respond to comments. Because it is it is social media, after all, right? <laughs> okay. So, here, speaking of Third Man, here's another Third Man reissue pressing that is quite extraordinary. So, this is... Uh, Caetano Veloso, is that how you say his name? Caetano Veloso. Tropicalia, the Brazilian album that, you know, named that whole movement. 
uh, the whole Tropicalia movement. Uh, from 1960-something, I think there's a little booklet that comes... Inglorious Mono, this, again, the, like, jacket, the mastering, the plating, the pressing, the whole presentation is really top shelf. I, I really, despite what I think of Jack White as a, you know, his rock music or whatever, Keep this up. Keep this up. This is, you know, because originals of this are freaking stupid rare, you know? And, you know, uh, and I think it's all analog. I think they really have tried to, they try to, pres and there's some weaselly words. With, I don't have the hype sticker, but it's like, anyway, it sounds great. It sounds great. It's a classic Brazilian Tropicalia record. And there you go. Okay, the new Guided by Voices. This collects those four seven inch EPs that are, Fantastic on their own. Um, and resequences it all into an album called Wark and Woof. And I gotta say, and you know, I you I can hear I can I can hear the eyes rolling out there, you know. Oh, another Pollard thing. And he says, Oh, it's the best thing ever. Well, I'm gonna say this is the best thing he's done in a while. I it's short song, super punchy. I really think getting together with Doug Gillard again. And letting him kind of have free reign with arrangements and adding strings and and guitar parts and his head has punt and and giving Travis Harrison a production credit so that there's like some punch and like some time has been put into making it sound like a freaking rock record. It's good. I mean, if you're skeptical of the whole thing and you find the discography daunting, and it is incredibly daunting. This is not a bad way to start. It this really almost recaptures the spirit of Alien Lanes and, you know, Under the Bushes, Under the Stars. And really, those are the records you should start with. But, yeah. You know, I, I, if he keeps doing that, I'm going to buy them. All right, the new in, Inter Arma. I pre-ordered this from uh, Relapse. Inter Arma. I really like this band. They're kind of a doom metal band down of... I think they're out of Richmond, Virginia. Speaking of Richmond, Virginia. Love that cover, you know. The fires in California last year, it's really kind of... Totally. Uh, two LPs on this m kind of mustard splatter vinyl, whatever. I got swept up in the whole, like, new album. This is really, really good. Their last album, Paradise Gallows, I think it's called, is really good also, but this is way darker and way way more intense and way more ambitious and like I'm I would venture to say their best album ever and if you are a fan of heavy doom kind of music and you can deal with the shrieking vocals and stuff that you know for an American contemporary music I, I dig it a lot dig it a lot yeah. okay from one extreme to the other went to Kent's uh, Hound Dog Hoover's uh, little tent sale down at the bottom of the hill here, and uh, he had some. He had this. He had this Shirley Scott record. You know, remember? You might remember. I said, "Oh, I'm going to get more Shirley Scott records." And hey, here's another one. Queen of the Organ, recorded live at the front room. Uh, I can't quite. 1964. It's got Stanley, her husband Stanley Turrentine on the on the on the, the tenor saxophone. And this just cooks, and again, like her playing is so tasteful, and um, it combines the, you know, the church thing and the blues and all that, you know, the chitlin sort of stuff, but also with like a, uh, you know, like a, I think she had like conservatory training a little, you know, because her touch and her feel and her note choices and stuff are. You know, it's not cliched. It's it's really really good. You know, and like I said, I'm not the hugest organ jazz fan, um, and it's not like this is like some sort of brown, groundbreaking stuff. But it's really really nice, really really nice. And okay, that's all. all right. We're almost done. Here's another war record I didn't have. War Live Double LP came out in 1973 on United Artists. The war, yeah, I've said it before, I war, you know, I, I got the two with the big hits from when I was a kid, you know, Why Can't We Be Friends and The World is a Ghetto. Um, but 
if I find war records in decent shape, and it's not easy. They're kind, they're plentiful, but they're often trashed. You know, that's that's the problem with like I'm trying to like build up my soul collection, and it's like, well, well, they're there, but like God, people just don't take care of their shit, do they? They don't. <laughs> well, welcome to collecting ephemeral things. Okay, so anyway, war live. This is this this is great cooking. Yeah, um, I think Cisco Kid was the big hit at the time. All right, last record. You still there? You still there? Cheers, everybody. Cheers, VC. You know, maybe it's not what it used to be, but... You know, as long as people still seem to give a shit, I will continue to give a shit. And on that note, here's an Eddie Harris record that I didn't have. Silver Cycles on Atlantic from 1969. So... A little bit on the early side of Eddie Harris's record. Well, not really, but this is great. This is uh, this is great. Um, <laughs> Eddie Harris. Yeah, again, hey, Mark and Dr. Rhythm. Maybe you're still hanging out there, but I know they're big fans of Eddie Harris. And, um, you know, again, these are common records. A bit hard to find in decent shape, but, um, you know, he, like, put a microphone on his saxophone, so he, like played rock venues and uh, it, it, this is great what can i say i am you know, i am I'm, I'm gonna collect them all at least you know the atlantic records i am where i'm gonna put them is a whole <laughs> other issue um, maybe if i renovate the garage put some more shelves in. hey uh, well anyway all right i'm gonna shut up now thanks thanks for hanging out thanks really appreciate it uh, I do appreciate your comments. I appreciate your likes. I appreciate people who subscribe and continue to watch. Um, and even if you don't comment, it's... Anyway. Hello, Void. Hello, Void. And now, goodbye. Goodbye. See you next time. With my massive jazz hall. Massive. Well, I had 20 records. See you then. <laughs> Bye.